Building upon the implementation of automatic tool selection attributes in FeatureCam 2015 R2, FeatureCam 2016 R2 sees an improvement to the automatic tool selection algorithms by incorporating an additional check for the tool shank diameter. This additional check analyzes whether the shank diameter is larger than the diameter of the cutting portion of the tool. If the shank diameter is found to have a larger diameter, then the tool selection criteria will change to take into account the cut length rather than just the exposed length of the tool, reducing the chance of tool collisions and gouges. In this particular example, you can see I've loaded my part component in with its associated fixture. But at the moment, if we go to the part view, we can see we've programmed no features. I'm going to use FeatureCam's automatic feature recognition to find the features on my part. This will allow me to quickly program the part and get a result as fast as possible. In this case, I'm going to go with that default part selection and also the default setup and let FeatureCam find the features. In this case, you can see it's found a face operation, a series of holes and sides. I'm going to say finish to accept those features go to the part view and we can see the part is now fully programmed. But we need to run a check on this and we're going to do this by running the 3D simulation. As the tool works its way down the component we can see we get a possible gouge. If we were to look at this just zoom into where the tool location is we can see that the tool shank has actually collided with the part component. And this is because the automatic tool selection rules, uh, I haven't set any at the moment, I've just called it to, to go ahead and select any tool that will fit those particular feature types. So let's go ahead and stop the simulation, just rotate the view a bit further round. I'm just going to play again. In this case, I'm just going to allow it to go all the way through. We can see that isn't the only problem. We've got a couple of extra issues around the rest of the component. It's probably down to the overall height of this part uh, and the tool selection length. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the rules to allow us to get a better tool for these particular regions. To do this we can go into the machining attributes and in this case I'm going to go to my uh, tool holder clearance area and you can see at the moment I've set no rules, so I said go ahead and select any tool. In terms of the clearance requirement, we've got four different options. We've got the option for none, we've got the option to use the feature depth, the setup depth and the stock depth. In this case, because of the location the setup at the top of the stock, we'll get pretty much the same results out of these two. I'm going to go ahead and select setup. As soon as I select that, you can see I get two radio buttons available to me. The first one here is uh, give a tool selection area if no tool meets the requirement. And the second option allows me to select the tool closest to the requirement if nothing matches this particular clearance requirement. I'm going to go ahead and just choose that first option and say OK. Go ahead and play the simulation. Again, I'm just going to turn my pause on gauge on and click play. Now immediately I get a tool selection error. If we go and visit that first error, we can see the issue is actually not with these side regions here, uh, but it's actually for these smaller pockets. And the reason being here is it's asking to find a 3mm diameter tool um, that is actually tall enough to clear from this uh, feature location to the height of that setup position. Now I don't actually have a tool that's capable of doing that, um, so what I need to do is change that radio button to allow me to select uh, these tools as it had by default uh, based on that clearance requirement um, if, uh, if the tool couldn't be found. So we can verify this, you can see those tools have not been selected. If I go into my machining attributes, into the holder clearance, note we've got no tools here, if I say select the tool closest, and say OK, you can see it updates and actually rectifies that issue. However, we're still unsure as to whether the, uh, the rest of the tools will fit in this part because we haven't checked against the shank, we've just checked against the exposed length of the tool. I go ahead and play the 3D simulation. We can see we still get a collision. 
If we go ahead and look at this part, we can see where the tool is located. We can see in this case the overall exposed length of the tool is more than enough to clear this part, uh, but the problem here is the, the shank area. If I was to measure the overall height of that region, just doing a measurement between the top and bottom positions here, in this case I get an overall height of 20.375 millimeters. If we were to analyze the, the feature, in this case this one here, you can see the tool it's gone and selected, it's got an overall exposed length of 21.9 millimeters, which is enough to clear, but the problem here is the, the shank is actually larger than the cutting portion of the tool, uh, and the cut length is actually too short. So what we need to do is actually change the selection algorithm. We do this by going back into the machining attributes, into the tool holder clearance, and we use this new option to additionally clear the shank as well as the, uh, as well as the exposed length of the tool. So I'm going to check that box and say OK. Say OK to that. And what we'll now get, if we again check that feature, into that tool selection, you can see in this case it's selected a slightly longer tool from my default crib. And this one has the cut length set to 25 millimeters, which again is more than enough in this case. So it's not looking at the exposed length, it's looking at this cut length to make sure that the tool is capable of cutting this part. We can re-verify that by going ahead, just changing my view and replaying the 3D simulation. We can now see that the part is fully collision free allowing us to get this part on the machine as quickly as possible.